Hey Calvary, happy Monday to you guys. Glad to have you here. My name is Robert, one of the pastors at the church here, and this is your word for the day. Growing up, I loved buildings. I loved driving around town, seeing new houses under construction, new buildings being built. I loved looking at blueprints and all the ways they plan to build things, and even thought a long time about being an architect and used to spend afternoons sketching the elevation appearances of the houses across the street from my bedroom window. And today I'm thankful I didn't go into school to be an architect, but I still love buildings. I love seeing unique structures and skyscrapers when I travel. And as we start into Mark chapter 13 today, Jesus uses the buildings around him to lead to a conversation about something much bigger and much more significant than the buildings they were looking at. So follow along with me. Mark chapter 13 says this. It says, And as he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings. And Jesus said to him, Do you see these great buildings? There will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. Kind of a weird response from Jesus, right? Kind of like a little bit of a downer, like, Hey, what wonderful building. Jesus is like, Well, it's going to be destroyed. See, he wasn't just talking about the buildings around him. He was talking about, you know, the importance of something much bigger than that. And he wasn't saying that his ministry was now going to be breaking down buildings in a ministry of demolition, but he's pointing to something bigger. He was referencing the end times. He was referencing the end of the world. Mark continues this way in verse 3. It says, As he sat down on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when all these things are about to be accomplished? And Jesus began to say to him, See that no one leads you astray. He continues on answering and giving them some information. He told them that there would be tension and fights and wars. He told them that there would be persecution, that they themselves would be persecuted by governments and called to account for what they believed and that someday they would die for it. He told them to speak what the Holy Spirit gave them to say in those moments. And, and all of this answered their question, but also didn't. Because in the last 10 years or so of being in pastoral ministry myself, one of the things that seems to be most frequently brought to me is how to know what the end times is going to be like and how to know when it's going to happen. And that's what the disciples were asking Jesus here. They say, hey, Jesus, what, what's it going to be like? When's it going to happen? How do we know? And he gives them some, some details, but honestly, some not so wonderful details about suffering and persecution and the pain that this time is going to bring to them and to everyone. But Jesus prefaces all of this with the statement, see that no one leads you astray. There's so much that can lead us astray from following Jesus. Maybe it's the focus that we have on the things of this world, the things we can build. Maybe the buildings, but probably things like wealth and the organizations we can build, the businesses we can establish, the following and possessions we can gather for ourselves. Or maybe it's the focus on the end times. If you're a follower of Christ and you're looking around at our world and saying, it seems so bad, is it near? Is it gonna happen in 2020? Because everything bad has happened this year, so maybe it's it. We're trying to solve the mystery of when it's going to happen, all the signs and what they're going to be. And guess what? You're going to be wrong in your guess. But what Jesus wants us to see here is that the point of life is following and honoring Jesus, not focusing on either the things of this world or the details and logistics of the end. Instead, he says, don't let anyone or anything lead you astray from the purpose, the purpose of following and loving Jesus. I pray today that, that you would not be led astray from following Jesus by anything or anyone. Whatever wants to steal your attention, your focus, whatever wants to be that distraction and, and negative influence in your life, I pray that you would stay strong and follow Jesus and not let anyone or anything lead you astray. Thanks for watching, Calvary. Hope you have a great day. We'll see you next time.